Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Fractions are pretty fantastic. They allow us to be able to split up numbers in all sorts of fun ways. Let's say you're organizing stickers, and you found that five-sixths of all your stickers are animals. And then those can even be broken into smaller groups. Three-sixths of your stickers are dog stickers, one-sixth of the stickers are cat stickers, and one-sixth of the stickers are frog stickers. We have broken down or decomposed the fraction into smaller parts. Now you learned about decomposition with area and breaking down shapes into rectangles. And you also decompose numbers when you use the distributive property and area models to multiply larger numbers. But now we're going to do the same thing with fractions. Now the example I gave before was just one way of how we could have broken down 5 sixths. Look at all these other ways. And there's even more than what you can see. Let's practice with some matching. Match the expression with the figure that correctly represents the sum. Ooh, I love matching problems. Now here we have to match the expression with the figure that correctly represents the sum. We got this. Let's start with number one. Okay, looks like we have one eighth plus one eighth. So we would fill in one section for each of those eighths. Next, we add two eighths. Well, we can fill in two more sections. And we have a total of four sections, or four eighths. Which one has four eighths filled in? Ah, B. Number one matches with B. Moving on down to number two. Three eighths plus three eighths. Okay, let's start by filling in three sections. Then we fill in another three, and we have six sections, or six eighths filled in. And that matches with, aha, uh -huh, D. Next is number three. Whoa, whoa, whoa. These are bigger fractions. Okay, but we're going to use the same strategy as the first two equations. We're going to start by shading in three sections to represent three eighths. And now add in three more sections for the next three eighths. And finally, two sections for two eighths. And we have a total of eight sections filled in. So three eighths plus three eighths plus two eighths is eight eighths or one whole. And that matches with letter A. And the last one now, two eighths plus three eighths. Should be easy enough. We know what to do already. Shade in two sections and then three more sections. And that gives us five sections. And that matches with letter C. And now that we've done our matching, let's compare. Use the symbols less than, greater than, and equal to to compare the equations. Mm-hmm. We are going to compare these equations using less than, greater than, and equal to symbols. Okay. Starting with letter A. We have 3 eighths plus 6 eighths compared to 7 eighths plus 1 eighth. Let's fill in a visual model to help us out. Now first we can fill in three sections and then six more sections and that gives us nine sections. And now we can compare that to the second expression. The seven sections shaded and then another section gets shaded in and well nine sections filled in is more than eight sections. So Three eighths plus six eighths is greater than seven eighths plus one eighth. Cool. Are you noticing anything about the number of sections filled in compared with the numerators of the fractions? Hmm. It looks like the total number of shaded sections is the same as the numerators added together. Ooh, maybe that's a trick to help us. Let's see if it holds true for parts B and C before we use it, though. All right, seven fifths plus one fifth. Okay, so we fill in seven sections and then one more section for those. Okay, we filled in eight sections and ah, seven plus one is eight. It looks like we did find a shortcut. Now let's add the next expression. One fifth plus three fifths plus six fifths. Okay, if we just look at the numerators, 
One plus three is four, plus six is ten. Eight fifths is less than two wholes or ten fifths, so seven fifths plus one fifth is less than one fifth plus three fifths plus six fifths. Huh. One and one fifth and six fifths are two different ways to write the same fraction, aren't they? I, you know what though? Sorry, got ahead of myself again. That's for another video lesson. Now let's keep it to this one. Moving on to the last part, part C. Let's try this one without drawing the rectangles. We can try looking at the numerators only. Okay, two plus two is four. So on the left we have four thirds. And on the right we have one plus one, which equals two. One third plus one third is two thirds. Four is greater than two, so two thirds plus two thirds must be greater than one third plus one third. I love finding shortcuts. What? Last problem already? I was just getting warmed up. Well, let's take a look. Which of the following expressions represents the fraction bar? It looks like there are two rectangle fraction bars, and each of the bars are split into seven parts, and 11 parts are shaded in total. And this means the fraction represented is 11 sevenths. And we can also look at it as a mixed number. There is one whole and four out of seven shaded. So this can also be called one and four sevenths. And now that we know what the fraction is, we can look at the expressions. Oh, here we go. Part A. Three sevenths plus four sevenths would give a total sum of seven sevenths. Mmm, that's not eleven sevenths. Part A is not a correct answer. Moving on to B, eight sevenths plus three sevenths is equal to eleven sevenths. Hey, perfect! That's how many are shaded for the fraction bar. So B is a correct answer. Okay, part C has one plus four sevenths. And this means that there's a whole shaded, or seven sevenths, and an additional four sevenths. Well, this would give us the mixed number of one and four sevenths. Hey, great! C is also a correct answer. And last one, D. Three sevenths plus two sevenths plus four sevenths. Three plus two is five, and add four would get us to nine. So this expression is equal to nine sevenths, which is not quite large enough to match. So D is not an answer. Only the expressions for B and C correctly represent the fraction bar. Wow, look at everything we learned in this video. We learned how decomposing fractions is breaking them down into smaller sections. And we also started to explore how we can compare and add fractions. Great work. I'm looking forward to seeing what we're going to learn together in the next video lesson.